Hi Year 12s, I'm just going to show you some things you can do for drawing surfaces on the um, CG50 calculator, um, which unfortunately I don't have, but lots of you do. Okay, so first we need to find the 3D graphing menu, so we're going to go down until we get to it, which is menu clear. Okay, and we're going to draw a graph um, of a paraboloid. So um, select just means whether you're going to draw the graph or not. Okay, delete's obvious. Um, this is memory, that's the draw. So we just want type. Okay, so there's some standard graphs in there. The line and the plane are really helpful for drawing, uh, for dealing with the vector problems because you can enter them in Cartesian or vector format. It's really helpful. Okay, but we're going to draw a surface, so we're going to use Z. So that's F2. Okay, and then we want to enter x squared plus y squared, but we aren't going to use the x button here because it will be the wrong one. So we start typing, you can start typing and then delete or you can press an arrow. Okay, so we have to use f1 and f2 for our variables. Okay. And then we just execute and that's it. Everything else we don't need to use, we just execute and let's draw it. Okay, so I have done some funny stuff with the view window. So I'm going to go to initial just to let you see what you'll probably see. And there we go. Okay, um, it looks a little bit small, so I'm going to try zooming in. So if you press plus, you can zoom in. If you press minus, you can zoom out. Okay, we can move the arrows to turn it round. Okay, and up and down. Okay, um, but I'd like to kind of get rid of all the empty space or get a better, better view. I'm going to choose view window. I'm going to just have my x's going from minus 2 up to 2 and my y's from minus 2 up to 2, so it's nice and square. And I, had to, I don't need anything on the negatives for z, so I'll just do minus 0.5. That will do. Um, going up to 4, because from the square 2, you get 4 uh, for our z. Actually, I'm just trying to think. We, uh, we want to go up to it. Okay. Right, so let's draw that. Lovely. So there's a paraboloid. Now, sometimes that's a little bit less um, helpful to see those kind of edges. So if instead I kind of slice the top off, and um, I could do view window and just reduce. So don't go to my actual maximum for my x and y maximum. So I'm just going to go for. And when we draw it this time, it's kind of a bit easier to see it's a circle. Okay. Um, right then, so there's lots of really helpful things. If you think you know what the um, stationary point is, then you can sketch a point. So if you press, so CLS is clear screen of all your jottings. Okay. Text is if you want to annotate it. Plot. Okay. Plots points. So we would then scroll down to where we think we want to plot a point, okay, or, yeah, that's it. We can't type the numbers in, and then we um, execute, okay? And what that does is plots a point. So you can plot it out in the wrong place if you want. So that might be handy if you want to see if you've got, if you're somewhere on a surface for your stationary points, just checking. But I'm going to clear the screen, okay, from those points that I've drawn. And much more helpful, I think, is the trace button. So the trace will start somewhere sensible, like the origin. And then you can use your arrows to trace points on the surface. Now, this is going to be really handy for investigating whether points in the vicinity of a stationary point are above or below the stationary point. So we know for this one, for example, the stationary point is 0, 0, 0. Okay, and if we go in any direction at all from 0, 0, 0, okay, we end up with larger z values. So all of the points are above our stationary point, which tells us we have a minimum point. Okay, right, um, so let's have a look as well at G-solve. These two things, intersect and relation, those, um, so the intersection finds the intersection if you've got um, planes and lines only. And the relation finds relationships between planes and lines. For example, it says they're orthogonal, um, that kind of thing. 
Okay, so we can't use those for our surface, but we can use crops. Right, so what I'd like to do is get a contour plot. So I'm going to choose Z equals a number. Okay, so I've got Z. Now it will automatically just pick a random number. So say I wanted the contour where um, Z is equal to um, 2. Then I just type 2 and execute. And it's moved the Z to 2. Okay, the other thing we can do is press view Z and we get the bird's eye view. So we've got the X and Y axes there. And we can see that um, our plane, which is z equals 2, is intersecting with the blue surface here. Okay, So um, we can see the green plane above our surface, then we see the blue surface, and then we see the, the spare bits of green sticking out the edges. So that means the inner circle circumference is what we would plot for our contour. OK, from here we can go up and you'll see that the contour um, moves outwards. Yep. Or we can move down and the contour makes a smaller circle. OK, now if we had um, an upside down paraboloid, OK, where it's like a, at the top of a mountain, then instead we'd see a blue circle and the rest would be green on the outside. But again, it would be the edge of the circle that we're looking at here that you would take as your contour. OK, let's go back to the original view by pressing F6. It's better, isn't it? OK, I'm going to exit and G-solve again. So from here, as soon as you start moving, unfortunately, the section disappears. OK, um, let's have a look at a section. Uh, let's go parallel to the x-axis. So we'll pick x. OK. And it's giving us x is 0. I would like, let's start with um, x equals 1. So I type 1, enter. OK. And I'm going to click view x. There we go. So now we've got the z-axis and the y-axis. Sorry, it's parallel to the y-axis because we've held x as fixed. OK. So... For this one, we can then draw this lovely where the where the mesh, the um, where the, the slice plane, the x equals one plane, cuts through the surface where you can see the change from green to blue. That's the shape you would draw on your graph of the section for x is one. Okay, parallel to the y-axis. Let's go back to the original view. Now, instead, if we picked x is negative 1, OK, and then we try to look at the flat-on view, we can't see it because it's hidden. It's behind the surface. The blue surface is in the way, which is really annoying. OK, but we have a way around that by drawing a plane. Okay. So I'm going to exit. So we know we can see that here, but if we wanted to turn it round so that we could start to see it as soon as we turn it, it vanishes. Okay. So let's exit and we go down and we're going to um, put a plane in instead. So we're going to put the plane x equals negative 1. So I press type and then I'm going down to the plane. I'm going to choose plane. Okay. So we want x is equal to negative 1. So we want an x value. Okay. And then we want to have uh, we don't want any y's, we don't want any z's, but because it would be x is negative 1, we need to do that the value d here is positive 1. Okay, and now we can draw, and it's selected both of them, so the, cur the surface is blue and the plane will be red. Okay, there we go, that's better. And now we can twirl it around to our heart's content. It's going to take a while, but we twirl it right around until it's at the point where it's flat on. So I'm using the left arrow to turn it, but then I'm going to now need to make it tilt upwards till it's flat. So we've got the Z axis and the Y axis and where the two intersect, you can see a lovely parabola there. And that's what you draw for your section. I hope that's helped.